Hello, my name is Lance Willoughby Hudson. I'm an associate in the New York City office for Bond, Shonick and King. And my practice area primarily focuses on counseling employers with questions they have about employment issues or labor issues, and also litigating some of those issues in federal or state court or any other administrative agency. So today I had the pleasure to briefly talk about dress code policies. It was a question that came in from one of our guests on our weekly webinar, and she basically wanted some clarification about just dress codes now, considering all the changes that have gone on in the world and really just in the, in the country. So the first thing that I discussed was um, you have to really look at federal, state, and local laws and kind of evaluate if there's been any major changes. And once you look at that, you want to just kind of focus on common protected classes under each law. So for example, under Title VII, um, there are certain protected classes that are more relevant for dress code policies. So some of those classes are race and color and religion. So those are like common protected classes that are generally affected by dress code policies and where many issues occur. And also on a state level, you want to look at the state that you're actually located in. But if you're in New York, New York State, you want to look at the New York State Human Rights Law. And as I mentioned in the webinar today, um, usually state and local discrimination laws are more expansive and protected and just provide a little bit more detail about protected classes. So for New York State, uh, gender identity or expression is one protected class, race, and it includes historical traits associated with race, such as hair texture and protective hairstyles like braids, locks, and twists are protected classes in New York State. And if you take it one step farther and look at local law, and again, look at the city where your company is located, but since we're in New York, I'm going to focus on New York City. So there's the New York City Human Rights Law, and they include gender as well, but they take it a step farther and define gender as an individual's gender identity, self-image, appearance, behavior, or expression. And I also mentioned in the webinar, too, there's two new protected classes that recently was enacted in New York City in November 2023, and that's height, and weight. So once you do that, you really want to just look at, you know, what your current dress code policy is right now and just make sure it's not too defined. And what I mean by defined is you don't want to have dress code saying man must wear this or women cannot wear that. You want to really keep it very neutral. So that's really the safest way to go is to keep the dress code very neutral. And also too, you want to just make sure you permit employees the right to request for an accommodation. So for an example, under federal, state, and city discrimination laws, um, a protected class is religion. So if a certain employee has like a garment that they wear based on their religion, or they have a hairstyle based on their religion, you wanna make sure they have the opportunity to request an accommodation if there's something in the current dress code that prevents a certain hairstyle or a certain garment. And lastly, and this kind of aligns with the company values and mission, is you want to make sure that you create a legitimate business justification for your dress code. So for instance, um, I use the example of like having a beard policy. Um, if you're a fire department and there are certain state or federal laws that requires um, certain firefighters not to have facial hair, then you can implement a policy where you can't have any beers just because if you do have a beer, it's going to kind of prevent wearing certain protective equipment, which is required for firefighters to prevent injury to themselves. And that leads to a whole nother situation. So again, thank you so much just for allowing me to recap dress code policies and just things to consider and laws to look at and continue to come watch our weekly Tuesday webinars and submit questions if you have questions about a particular topic. Thank you.